from pennies to billions. Ever wondered how the wealthiest Russians made their fortunes? In 1997, Forbes rocked the world by adding four Russians to their coveted list of billionaires. These pioneers of oligarchy rode the waves of privatization in the 1990s, snagging state-owned assets at bargain prices. Fast forward to Vladimir Putin's rise in 2000, and these oligarchs saw their wealth soar to new heights, courtesy of the Kremlin. But what do they do with all that wealth? Join us in today's video as we uncover the lavish lifestyles and spending habits of Russian oligarchs. All right, let's kick things off with Roman Abramovich, the billionaire Russian oligarch known for his extravagant spending habits. First up, we have Chelsea Football Club. Abramovich made headlines when he purchased the club in 2003 for a whopping $223 million. Since then, he spared no expense in assembling a star-studded team and winning numerous trophies. Moving on to his New York mega mansion, Abramovich's Upper East Side abode spans 18,000 square feet and features five stories of luxury living. With amenities like an art store, a dining room, and a personal elevator, it's a true symbol of opulence. And who could forget his art collector extraordinaire? Abramovich boasts a collection that includes works by Picasso and Bacon, worth millions of dollars. His real estate ventures also extend to Colorado, where his Wildcat Ridge mansion offers 14,300 square feet of pure luxury. But Abramovich's luxury doesn't stop there. From his Kensington Palace garden home in London to his fleet of yachts, including the Eclipse and Ecstasy, he is redefining what it means to live in the lap of luxury. And let's not forget his car collection, valued at over $50 million, featuring gems like the Bugatti Veyron and Ferrari FXX. With properties like New Holland Island in St. Petersburg and a Boeing 767-33A ER plane, Abramovich's extravagant lifestyle is truly something to marvel at. Next up, we've got Alexei Pavlov, who knows how to splash out on the bling. When he tied the knot with Zinya Saritsena in 2017, it was nothing short of extravagant. We're talking a jaw-dropping $10.6 million wedding ring for the bride, along with an eight-tier floating wedding cake dripping in opulence. Xenia even changed into three different bridal gowns during the ceremony, and they had Russian pop stars serenading their hundreds of guests at the Moscow Bash. Next in the spotlight is Yuri Scheffler, the proud owner of Scotland's swankiest sporting estate, the Tolkien Estate on Spyside. This vodka kingpin's property boasts some of Europe's finest salmon fishing spots, but Yuri's not stopping there. He also snagged a $75 million estate in Malibu, California. And let's not forget his super yacht, Serene, which he sold for a jaw-dropping $468 million to Saudi Arabia's crown prince. Talk about living large. Then we've got Farkad Amadov, cruising in style on his $500 million super yacht, Luna. This floating palace features two helipads, a spa, and a swimming pool sprawling across nine decks. Farkad's also quite the art enthusiast, with a private collection worth over $110 million. And if that's not enough, he's got a thing for vintage shotguns too. But his lavish lifestyle comes with a price tag. His divorce settlement with ex-wife Tatiana Amadova rang in at a staggering $453 million. Yep, these oligarchs sure know how to make a splash. Andrei Melichenko, another heavyweight in the billionaire club, made his fortune in fertilizer, coal, power, and banking. At one point, he soared to the 139th spot on the billionaire list in 2016. Now get this, he's the proud owner of the Motor Yacht A, a jaw-dropping $311 million super yacht. This thing is so massive that London's Tower Bridge had to be lifted to let it pass through the Thames. Talk about making an entrance, right? But hold on, we're just scratching the surface of Andre's opulent lifestyle. This 119-meter yacht features a bomb-proof owner's cabin, a rotating bed, and not one, not two, but three swimming pools, 
One even has a glass base. With seven luxury cabins accommodating up to 13 guests and a crew of 42, it's like a floating palace. But wait, there's more. Andre's love for luxury extends to the skies too. He splurged on his very own customized Boeing 737 private jet, perfect for jetting between his swanky real estate properties in New York, London, and the French Riviera. Speaking of real estate, let's talk about the love nest he shares with his wife, Alexandra. Their 35-acre Ascot estate, valued at around $30 million, is just a stone's throw away from the Queen's Windsor residence. And don't even get me started on their New York penthouse overlooking Central Park, worth a cool $13 million. And if that wasn't enough, their wedding in 2005 was one for the books, featuring performances by the likes of Christina Aguilera, Whitney Houston, and Julio Iglesias. Talk about living the dream, right? Now, let's talk about the real deal. Russian billionaire and playboy Mikhail Prokhorov. This guy wasn't afraid to throw down some serious cash for the ultimate luxury experience. Picture this, it's 2010, and Prokhorov decides he wants to call the French Riviera his home sweet home. But not just any home, he sets his sights on the majestic Via La Leopolda, once owned by none other than King Leopold II of Belgium. Now this villa doesn't come cheap. Prokhorov was willing to drop a jaw-dropping $439 million to make it his own. And that's not all. When you adjust for inflation, that's nearly $567 million in today's money. Talk about deep pockets, right? But wait, there's more. To see the deal on his palatial estate, Prokhorov didn't hesitate to plunk down a whopping $44 million deposit. That's 10% of the total price just to secure his spot as the owner of one of the most luxurious houses in the world. Now you might think that's where the story ends, but nope, it's just getting started. Unfortunately for Prokhorov, the global credit crunch hit hard, and he found himself in a bit of a bind. Despite putting down that hefty deposit, he ended up with nothing to show for it when the deal fell through. And if that wasn't enough, he had to fork over an extra $1.2 million in interest on top of it all. Ouch! Even for a billionaire like Prokhorov, that's got to sting. Now let's dive into the fascinating world of Victor Veckelsberg, a man with a penchant for collecting some of the most exquisite treasures of the planet. In February 2004, Veckelsberg made headlines when he acquired nine Fabergé Imperial Easter eggs from the Forbes publishing family in New York City. These stunning pieces of art were not just any eggs, they were part of Russian history and culture, and Veckelsberg knew their worth. He shelled out a cool $100 million for the lot, making him the largest owner of Fabergé eggs in the world. In addition to his passion for preserving Russian heritage, Veckelsberg also has a heart for history. In 2006, he agreed to foot the bill to the tune of approximately $1 million to transport the historic Lowell House Bells from Harvard University back to their original location in the Danilov Monastery in Moscow. Thanks to his generosity, these iconic bells returned home on September 12, 2008, after decades abroad. But not every acquisition has been smooth sailing for Veckelsberg. In 2005, he dropped a hefty 1.7 million pounds at a Christie's auction for a painting titled Odalisk, attributed to Russian artist Boris Kustodiev. However, doubt soon arose about the painting's authenticity, with experts questioning the signature's legitimacy. Veckelsberg didn't take this lightly. He took Christie's to court, and in July 2012, the judge ruled in his favor. Not only was he entitled to a refund for the painting, but Christie's was also ordered to cover around one million pounds in costs. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Did you find these insights in the lives of Russian billionaires fascinating? What other topics would you like us to cover in future videos? Don't forget to leave your suggestions in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next one.